Hey guys, so I decided to try some Wi-Fi 6 streaming completely wirelessly with my Pico 4 to the PC using virtual desktop. Let's see what happened and whether it's worth the upgrade. But first, a shout out to our sponsor of the day, VR-Wave.Store, your all-in-one go-to place for your lens prescription adapters. 5% discount when you use the promo code VRESSENTIALS. <laughs> Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Lovely to be spending some time with you guys again. And a big shout out to Asus, who provided me with a whole bunch of different routers. Today, we're going to be talking about the Asus AX6600 Zen Wi-Fi, part of the XT8 family. And do be part of the notification squad after you subscribe, as of course I'll be uploading more videos reviewing more of the routers, including a very special model that isn't even out yet. Mm. Now, so far, to be very honest with you, I'm extremely impressed with Wi-Fi 6. Do go and check out the previous video that I uploaded last week with the review of Half-Life Alex and also After the Fall, as I do give a lot of details in those videos. But using VRSIMS is a little bit different because the response has to be even faster. And we're using more softwares, including today, the Logitech G923 wheel. And also big shout out and hit the likes for Next Level Racing, who provided the VR Essentials community channel with the VRSIMS rig, which is pretty awesome. And do go and check out the video that I'll put a link in the description below as well, where, you know, I give a little synopsis as how to build this beautiful rig. It's very interesting to see how virtual desktop reacts to all the various different VR experiences that I would be using in this video. There are three different VR Sims racing apps that I'll be using, including Cardcraft, Aceta Corsa, and also Automobilista 2. If I was to summarize, first of all, in all the three different apps, I actually use the maximum graphics in game itself. So that means except for the shadows, which I kept to medium, but everything else is kept to ultra, maximum, super high, or whatever it might be, you cannot go below. That includes bloom, it includes all the special effects, it includes the crowd, it includes the grass, the environment. Absolutely everything is set to the highest maximum graphic settings that you could possibly imagine inside of all the various different car sims VR games. Now, inside of Virtual Desktop, you'll notice that there are various different settings you can use. Now, of course, I'm using the RTX 2070 setting, which is medium. And if you do set it to higher, I don't really see any noticeable differences, to be honest with you, as it, you know, will use the power of whatever I have in my machine. But it is possible that depending on your computer, if you do try to set it up to a higher specs than your actual graphics card, you may have some issues during your gameplay. So if you do have any issues, you know, do make sure that that specific setting is set to the appropriate one to your graphics card. Now, Virtual Desktop also has a boosted option inside of the settings, which is very useful for people, especially who are recording content, which I, of course, enabled when recording the video. But do note that the battery life will also decrease faster when you actually apply this setting on. Now, Virtual Desktop is certainly not a free app. You do need to pay for it, but there are some benefits comparing to the free version of the Virtual Assistant that comes with the Pico. Personally speaking, I don't even have the free Virtual Assistant by Pico installed of my in my computer because, first of all, well, I don't really know if my data has been picked up by them. You know, that's just one of the worries that I have. Secondly, I can't control the bitrate. That means I can't make it higher or lower. I can only change the actual resolution of the screen. And thirdly, well, the bitrate inside a virtual desktop is not only more flexible, but I'm going to get more juice out of it and better clock rates out of it. And it's just much more flexible when you're actually bringing up the bitrate or turning it down because you can really have much more control over that specific setting, which I really, really love. And of course, I can stream all my PC games, not just my VR actual applications, inside of ver various different virtual worlds from a huge cinema to my private office, which looks really cool. So there's tons of different things you can do in virtual desktop that you certainly cannot do inside of the virtual assistant that comes with the Pico and that's free of charge. Now, again, I was very, very impressed when using Wi-Fi 6 with VR Sims, because don't forget, as I mentioned, I'm inside of my studio, which is about 10 meters away from the router with a door closed and a wall in between. And when I was using Wi-Fi 5, 
it just simply would not work every time I was using the VR themes. It just, oh my God, it was a complete nightmare. Even when I actually had the wheel in the same room as the Wi-Fi 5 router, it just didn't really work properly, to be honest with you. It just didn't respond straight away and there was definitely a lot of latency. But when I'm using the Wi-Fi 6 so far away from the router and a door closed with a wall in between, which really, you know, and there's, 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 there's no Wi-Fi mesh here. It's all, you know, just one router pairing absolutely everything with only a mobile phone, my computer and a TV hooked up to the actual Wi-Fi in terms of devices. It was just absolutely amazing. I was able to turn straight away. The wheel, the G923 was super, super responsive to what was going on inside the Pico. There just wasn't any latency whatsoever. So I have to say that in terms of the latency itself, well, nothing to complain about. Everything worked superbly well. Just wow, just really wow. I mean, honestly speaking, spending the extra two, 300 bucks or whatever it might cost in your own country is definitely worth the experience. I would say from the upgrade of Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6. But I'd love to hear your comments. If you have Wi-Fi 5 and you're also about 10 meters away or you have a door closed or a wall in between your router, do leave a comment below. Let us know what Wi-Fi model you have, a router you have, excuse me, that works perfectly with your wheel and your Sims experiences. Now, in terms of the graphics, this is really where things get very interesting because depending on the VR app that you'll be using, well, your battery is going to change. For example, with Aceta Corsa, not Aceta Corsa Competizione. I have to make it very clear. I did not test it with that app simply because the RTX 2070 doesn't really throttle it very well. It's quite hard to get perfect settings. Although do go and check out the previous videos where I talk about, you know, the optimum settings that I got using the RTX 2070. But with Aceta Corsa, I was able to put the bitrate in virtual desktop all the way to about 130 before it would start to, you know, throttle a little bit more. I didn't have at 130 any form of blinders on the side, which is basically these kind of black lines that you'll see when you rotate your VR headset from left to right. So everything was absolutely smooth, no problems with the graphics. Everything seemed to be, honestly speaking, very comparable to the HP Reverb G2. Just very comparable. It's very hard now to really tell the differences. Of course, there are some compression areas here and there where, you know, things won't be super clear. For example, some of the power lines or some of the crowd, sometimes you can definitely tell there are a little bit issues here and there. But honestly speaking, just very, very slight compared to the HP Reverb G2. If it wasn't for the, for the battery life, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the actual video itself, I would be very happy to use my Pico 4 for Sims racing now, to be honest with you. Although if it wasn't also for the comfort, I will talk a, a bit more about this also for the more then again, I would be very happy to use the Pico 4 for my VR Sims with the Wi-Fi 6 and the Asus AX6600 in the XT8 series. But when I was using Automobilista 2, now this is where things got interesting. I had to bump down the bitrate because it couldn't handle it, handle it, excuse me, at 130 Mbps. I had to bring it down to about 90 or 100 max before I would get any throttling issues or latency issues where you could see it when you rotated your headset from left to right, you get the black things that come across uh, on the side of your headset. And also when you're moving the wheel, then the wheel would not be one-to-one. -one. There'd definitely be a slight piece of latency there, breaking the immersion and just making things a bit less comfortable inside of VR. So you do have to experiment a little bit more. But with CarCraft, I also had to bring it down to about 100 because it takes a lot of power. And I have to say that although the experience in CarCraft is absolutely amazing, the developers do need to work a little bit more in terms of the engine, the game engine, in adapting it a bit more for VR because there are definitely a lot more issues in terms of the graphics, especially for things that are further away, all the foliage, all the textures of the leaves, um, you know, and the balloon and all anything that is basically, I would say in real life, 50 meters or 25 meters away from your actual, uh, you know, eyesight, then, you know, things do get to be degraded. And although it is slightly better 
on the HP Reverb G2, it's not that much better either. So I think this is more of a car craft kind of issue. And as I mentioned, I did experiment a lot with car craft. It's a very difficult game to drive. You're definitely gonna have to spend a lot more hours in it in terms of tuning your cars, tuning, excuse me, your cars and all these different things because it's very, very responsive with the G923. Very easy if you're not taking the right turn at the right angle to go in the gravel and to completely ruin your race, so to speak. So you definitely have to spend more hours inside of Carcraft to get it right. But the gameplay is definitely really, really good fun. If you don't mind, of course, you know, lots of graphics here and there in the textures, as I just mentioned just now. Now, in terms of the comfort with the Pico 4, Let's say that you have a G2 or you perhaps you have an index or another, you know, headset. I can only compare it with the HP Reverb G2 and also let's say the Meta Oculus Quest 1, which I don't have anymore, but I certainly do remember the comfort. Well, the Pico 4 just doesn't really take the shape of my face. I've had it now for almost, I would say, four or five months and it still doesn't really feel comfortable. After one hour, I do have to take it off and I feel much more comfortable with my HP Reverb G2. I could spend hours on ending that. Now that is simply because the shape of the G2 gasket is just much more rounded, less straight and also the type of cotton or the type of fabric that they use on the actual gasket itself is just softer and much more comfortable to put on my face. So the comfort I have to say just leaves things to be desired. I can't, I just can't use the Pico for too long. It'll start to hurt my, hurt my face, excuse me, after about an hour of usage. So I'm much more happy to use my HP Reverb G2, as I mentioned just now. Now, as for the battery life, I did do a lot of testing without enabling the boosting setting option inside of Virtual Desktop, because you do need this when you're recording actual footage for content so you don't get any throttling issues with the clock rate. Well, it simply doesn't really last that long, you know. It lasts about an hour 30, an hour 45, pushing it to its limits. So, you know, the two hours or two hours and a half that, you know, Pico 4 says it can, you know, use, well, when you're using the virtual desktop and you're streaming wirelessly to your PC, will not last two hours or two hours and a half or whatever they claim it to be. So. Do be mindful that you know you are going to lose a good half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on the usage you use it for. If you're using it for you know just streaming some videos, it might last two hours and 20 minutes. I do have to check it, but generally speaking, for me, the Pico 4 doesn't last more than two hours. Two hours and 20 minutes or two hours 15 is really, really the maximum. If really I'm not using it in between, that means if I'm just sitting there in the menu, just clicking some things or something like that. But if I'm using apps like, for example, after the fall, it's certainly not going to be lasting for two hours, 20 minutes whatsoever. It will last more ever for two hours to maybe two hours, 15, pushing it to the maximum, but more or less two hours. Now the scenes in terms of loading time, I have no issues whatsoever in all the three different apps, both for Assetta Corta, Automobile Set 2, and also Cardcraft. Um, and also in terms of the sound, there's no crackling going on, uh, you know, inside of my headphones when I'm streaming to the PC. No issues, honestly, no issues. And when there are issues, well, they're extremely rare. I would say once every one hour or one hour, 30 minutes, maybe I will have an issue here and there. But honestly speaking, no issues whatsoever. The sound, the audio is very good. I'm able to hear absolutely everything. I feel very, very immersed inside of all three different VR sims and do hit the likes and subscribe to the channel after and hit the notifications after you subscribe excuse me because I will also do some testing with Dirt Rally and give you that feedback as to what it's like using the Wi-Fi 6 and also comparing the Asus XT8 with the brand new model that I can't talk about just yet because it's not released but I will be submitting that video uploading that video to the channel as well very very soon so do smash the likes and if we hit to more than 20 or 30 likes, I'll upload that video next. And by the way, a quick tip about Virtual Desktop, if you do want to bring up the quick menu of Virtual Desktop, now all you have to do is hit the three bars button on the left-hand side controller and just press and hold and it should come up. Or you could just press it very quick, a couple times and it will bring it up and then press it again to bring up the settings. And from there, you can change all the various different settings inside a Virtual Desktop without force quitting virtual desktop. Now, I did mention in the previous video that I did have some issues bringing up that 
quick menu, but this is how you do it. Guys, lovely to be spending some time with you today. Really had a lot of fun. Do leave some comments below if you have any questions about the Asus AX6600, or of course the next level racing, racing rig, or the Logitech G923 racing wheel as well. Be very happy to answer any of your questions or anything about VR in general or the metaverse, or if you have any personal questions or any other questions, leave them in the comments below. But guys, until next time, do make sure to hit the notification bell of to subscribe as I'll be uploading plenty of really awesome new videos very very soon until then have a lovely day ahead and of course have fun stay safe in vr take it easy see you in the next video very soon bye for now take it easy ciao